Hello, I'm here with uh, Ms. Harry Dash, consultant ophthalmologist who specialises in ocular plastics. Thanks for letting us interview you today. Welcome, Amy. Uh, so we're going to uh, ask Ms. Harry Dash about um, ophthalmology and what, uh, how to become an ophthalmologist. Okay, so if somebody wanted to do or become an ophthalmologist, uh, what's the route from medical school? Um, so normally when people finish medical school they would spend um, one or two years doing basic uh, what we call foundation training. Um, it used to be called house officer training when, when I was training and that's where you learn your basic general medicine and general surgery. Um, if you have a, an idea that you might want to do ophthalmology even during that time most people would start to look for projects or opportunities to get exposure in ophthalmology. Things to do are things like contacting the ophthalmology department to do uh, audits and projects with interested consultants. After your foundation training there's usually um, a, a, you usually apply to do ophthalmology training as a run-through um, process which is usually about seven years so we don't go through general surgical training uh, which some people think we do it's actually very dedicated specialized training um, usually when you've finished your seven years um, you then would undertake one or two years of fellowships depending on um, which particular part of ophthalmology interests you so most people subspecialize at the end of that um, and then um, hopefully you would get to work as an independent consultant after that okay and I know it sounds like a long time seven years but is there anything else one may do to prolong it or other opportunities during your training uh, once you start training there are also opportunities to take breaks from your career and it usually falls into about three different ways. You can either do uh, breaks to do research um, and that can usually have to apply for that and it can be to do a degree or period of research. You can do an out of um, program career break which may or may not be counted towards your training and some people use that uh, as an opportunity to go abroad or, or really do something completely different. Um, and some people will take a little bit of time out. Of course, if during that time your life is going on um, and you may have family, especially as a woman, you may want to take maternity leave, so you may have gaps during your training for that. So that can make training a little bit longer, but certainly more interesting and more varied. So people have lots of different paths. It's not just going from one year to the next year to the next year without a break. Um, and um, what's the main advantage of not just going three or seven years straight? And um, the main advantage really is that it gives you a, a very good sense of perspective. Um, uh, it's certainly, um, if you are going abroad or doing pe periods of research, it gives you sort of other qualities really that, that you can then use in your career. And um, uh, as an ophthalmologist or to become one, do you have to do any exams after medical school? Yes, always exams. Um, most people have to do um, uh, an initial uh, basic science or part one exam. Some people will do that before they go into ophthalmology because it is very basic science, but most people find it a little easier in the first year or two when they have a little bit of clinical knowledge. Uh, and then in the middle of your training, most of us have to do a refraction certificate, which for those that don't know is just really about um, assessing people for, for glasses and focusing. Um, and then towards the end of your training, you do a final or exit exam. Um, and of course, you know, you have to do all that studying at the same time as, as training. Um, we were just discussing before that a lot of people don't realise that taking exams can become quite expensive. It's the same with all postgraduate exams. The more times you do it, the more expensive it gets. Um, so it, it makes sense to try and plan early, um, plan to do it early, but not so early that you're going to be doing it again and again. Okay, so now that you are a consultant, what's your working week like? What do you do? Um, so my typical working week is, um, I'm a, I'm a full-time NHS consultant. Um, as an ophthalmologist, you would usually find that out of the clinical sessions, which can be anything from seven to nine to ten sessions, um, you would spend uh, two, perhaps two theatre sessions, and um, the rest will be clinic-based sessions. Um, but that obviously can vary a little bit. If you're a consultant that has a research um, component to your job, you would probably have more research sessions, less clinical sessions. So that can be a little bit variable. Um, I spend about two and a half to three uh, sessions of my time in theatre because the specialty I do is very surgical. Um, and so it's about, and then the rest is, is clinic based. 
Um, most consultants often then do um, a little bit of private practice, which you then do in your own time usually. And I think that's an important and useful component to your work as well. And it gives you a little bit of insight into how things work outside of the NHS. Mm. Um, all the other stuff, life, <laughs> teaching, um, research, and, and you usually find that the sessions that you're allocated just aren't enough. So most of us are doing all that in our spare time, but that's fairly common as a trainee as well, I think. I was going to ask, so does uh, much of their working week differ as a trainee? Um... Um, I think um, as an ophthalmology consultant, you are doing less acute work um, compared to the trainees that have a lot of experience in primary care or casualty ophthalmology. Um, you're obviously on call a lot as a consultant, you often come to you for advice, but you're less often manning the front door as the trainees are. So your, your casualty commitment is often less or none, even though you have on call commitments. Um, and that does free up your time a little bit. Okay. So it is hard work to become an ophthalmologist, but at the end of the day, can you tell us why you enjoy your job? Um, well, I, well, I definitely do enjoy my job and I, I really can't imagine doing anything else, particularly, as I said, because surgery was always my main interest. I get to do a lot of that and I really enjoy surgery. I also find ophthalmology very satisfying. Um, um, a lot of patients that I treat, um, in fact in my particular subspecialty, because it's very surgical, you sort of get immediate feedback and immediate results, which is nice um, for, for the things that I like to do. So thank you for letting us interview you today. No problem, thank you, it's my pleasure.